this presentation is to guide you through the permaculture design process. There are some basic stages in the design process, such as the research, creating ideas, creating the design and presenting it either to your client or to the other stakeholders. But this is not a linear process. It will be more like a spiral because more research will come to you as you evaluate different ideas. So be prepared to go back to the start at times to build a better design. To be honest, one of the biggest sections of your design process will be the research. In the research, we collect the goals of the clients and ourselves and the ethics. And then we look at the data, like all the different types of maps and the permissions that you need to apply for and the sectors of natural energies that are reaching the site. And then we look at the capability of the site and the people that are going to be involved in changing that site. So we have goals your objectives, the client's objectives. We have ethics and sometimes there can be a conflict of ethics and we have dreams. In the data, we're going to be looking for permissions that are required or permits. We're going to look at different types of maps and to be honest, we probably have to do some mapping ourselves to get the finer details. And we're going to look at sectors, all the different natural energies that come to the site. When we're looking at the social aspects of a design, we're going to look at the historical use of that site and whether that should be honoured. And then the community values. By listening to the community, we connect with them. The capability assessment of a site will look at the different assets that are on the site, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, and the risks and then the skills and the interests of the people involved. When we get to the ideation stage, where we put ideas onto paper, we're going to look at the different elements that we can use or the different components in the design. We identify the different components that are wanted by the client and those that are needed, and we analyze them. Then we look at the function and we look at different functions from each element and different elements or components that will meet those functions, sort of like having safeguards. Then we put this all together in an array, a pattern or a shape. So getting to the elements, we list them and we analyze them for how useful they are going to be and how they can be connected. There's a whole bunch of elements you can use in a design. But let's just take one, for instance, the bee. We know what its needs are. We know how much expertise is required and we know what it produces or what its function can be. And the main function of the bee is to actually pollinate crops, not just give us honey. So we make these connections when we make a bunch of cards, like playing dominoes. When we look at the functions, we want each element to perform several functions, not just be a one trick pony. And then when we look at the functions that we need, we want to have different elements that can perform that same function. So let's say there's a pretty important function of cycling nutrients. We want things that will cycle the nutrients on the site. So we want to compost things or we want chickens that will eat the food waste and then poop out some fertilizer. They're the different elements that can perform the function of nutrient cycling. But let's say we get that chicken. What else do we want from that chicken? Well, we can have eggs. We can have entertainment. We can have more chickens. So that one component, that one element has many functions. The array is where we join together the ideas of the sector, the zone and how it can be integrated. We use three factors to work out the best placement for an element. These three factors are the sectors, zoning and the integration with other elements. So let's take an example 
of the worm farm. The worm farm benefits from being in the sector that is shaded. It also benefits from being in a nearby zone, so it's not difficult for the user to carry waste, food waste from the kitchen to that worm farm. Then we think about how can that be integrated? What other elements can benefit from the worm farm? Well, the castings and the water from the worm farm is fertilizer for delicate plants in the nursery. So we position it between the kitchen and the nursery and in the shade. So now we move on to that stage of creating the design. We've got some ideas for the strategies that we can use to achieve the function. Remember that strategy of using cycling the waste by using chickens, but we know we can use worms and compost piles. Our strategy is to cycle the nutrients, but the different ways to do that with chickens or compost pile are the techniques. When we look at different techniques in a design, we're not just looking at different elements, but we could be looking at technologies or ways to imitate nature because they're not the same thing. If I go to choose a technology like solar panels, that's different from when I try to create energy using the sun in a natural way. That's where I grow wood for a wood fuel stove. The third thing within the creation stage is looking at patterns, where things will flow, where is the key line, where are the thermal bands on the site, how can I use gravity, and how can I generate social interaction, how can I integrate the community in the design. When we create the design we need to think about the strategies, the why we are doing this plan, whereas a technique is very specific to the who, the what, and the how and the when. Visually, the patterns in the design show the way that the components, the elements in the design, fit the landscape. But patterns also have a fourth dimension, the dimension of time. Patterns are a useful design consideration for flows for movement, such as along a pathway. Pathways and paths that run down the hill are good for carrying heavy things, but they also direct water. So let's say you want a direct line from your front door to the letterbox, that's traditional. People run out to collect a letter, well they did in the old days. But do you want water running straight from the letterbox to the house? Now we get to the stage where you get to present your ideas. You've drafted up a design and you're going to present it. You've pulled together all the resources and the time frames required, and you're going to discuss it with the client or the other stakeholders, or that might just be for yourself. You're going to think back over it, reflect on what you've done. And there's the feedback. You want to be open to feedback. In the draft, you're going to collect the ideas for the resources that are needed. You're going to show the difference between a concept design and all those implementation details that need to follow. And you're going to talk about time frames. In the discussion stage, you'll be talking to your client about the concepts and then the details that need to be finalised. And you'll be setting about to make a staging plan. What should come now? What can wait till later? And finally, we want to think about how you can accept feedback, how it can improve your work. Every stage in this process can have little feedback loops. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to put that into my next plan. The ultimate goal of your design is to empower the client. Maybe the client is yourself. Maybe it's your partner. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your whole community. By finding ways to empower the client, you will find a way to bring the design to life. And by having that design implemented, you get to assess how good it is.